Hey, what is going on? It has been a while since you have seen anything on Project War Wagon. That's my 77 custom Dodge Ram Charger. You know, the last time I showcased it, you got to see the custom axles, the three quarter ton swapped in, the suspension, etc. A lot has been done to it in the meantime. To bring you up to speed, I'll showcase what I've done for the power plant and transmission. I'll also show and highlight really all the amazing work on the custom transfer case setup done by Woods Off-Road in San Marcos. And then we're gonna finish off the video with a little bit of fabrication. Need to do some work on the transmission tunnel and you're about to see why. Let's get to it. And here she sits today. Doesn't look like a ton has been done from the outside until you start looking at the actual details. Now we actually ripped off the entire front end of this truck. The fenders, the hood, everything is from a 77 Dodge W200. Just so happens that the colors match and the patina actually matches really well as well. So that was cool. The front centerpiece here, the radiator core support, you'll see is actually gold. And a huge shout out to Mr. Johnny Mopar as he actually hooked me up with this piece. This is, I'm not sure what truck this is from actually. Maybe Johnny can throw that in the comments. But the original one was completely rotted in this corner. So instead of fixing it and going there, I just got rid of that, was able to swap this one in, and the whole front end was back together in no time. The power plant. Ignoring uh, my little rag cover here. This is because the valve covers just do not fit with this small block um, vacuum booster and master cylinder setup. I, you can swap them out for like a hydro boost setup, but the big block systems are nowhere to be found. You cannot buy them again. You either have to go to a junkyard and find a big block truck from a you know, 70s, 72 to 79, or 78 rather, so when they stopped making the big blocks, and rebuild it to swap it in, or you go hydro boost, or you kind of massage this a little bit. This is a B block, if you remember. This is the 426 stroker that we built for the piggy bank horsepower challenge. It is in the car, it's looking good, not done obviously, alternator, all the small accessory pieces, but it's mounted. I'm probably gonna have to loosen the vacuum boost and then kind of move it a little bit so I can get this valve cover on and actually seal it. I'm just trying to hide all the critters from getting in there for right now. This is a champion radiator. Uh, naturally, I got the wrong one. So the upper radiator hose is on, the bottom radiator hose, you can't quite see, is not on. The water pump comes out right there. The radiator's got an inlet down there. So I'm either gonna have to work out a hose system or what, but I can't exchange this now, it's been too long, so my bad. But this big block looks beautiful in here. I am really excited to get this thing rolling. All right, moving on. You also already saw the, the wheels and tires, you saw the axles, the suspension, etc. But what you haven't seen is this beautiful work from Woods Off Road, and a huge shout out to Tom Woods axles and off-road design for the parts. Here is the 203 doubler. Now, if you remember, or if you're not aware at least, the 70s Dodge trucks always came with the 203 transfer case, and that is a full-time four-wheel drive unit. You do not have the option to select two-wheel drive or anything else. It's chain-driven, beast, super heavy, and uh, pretty reliable. They can take quite a bit. But uh, the two two or threes I had were both chewed up. <laughs> and instead of trying to uh, rebuild them completely, it made more sense to go with this setup. Now obviously this is a custom cross member. This is something that Woods Off-Road put together. You see here, we've got the two or three range box, the off-road design adapter right there in the middle. Let's see if I can showcase that a little bit better. And then a figure eight GM uh, 205 transfer case. So with this setup, of course, you do have to have brand new axles, front to rear, at different lengths. You now you can shorten an axle if you want. Uh, mine were pretty beat up and it just made sense to go with some new units. So I'll show you a little bit more on the other side for that because you're gonna definitely be curious about the shifting system. The transmission, as you've probably seen, this is a 727. I just threw this nasty pan on here because I didn't want to uh, scratch my nice one. Just wanted to seal it, make sure no critters or anything got in there, dust. Uh, but the 727 has been completely rebuilt, completely. Went through this, I put Alto red clutches in. Uh, it does have a stock valve body right now, but we went through and did a shift kit for it for b and I've got a 2000 stall torque converter, which is pretty much stock, maybe a little bit higher than stock, which will work out for the size cam that I've got. 
And uh, yeah, as it sits right now, folks, everything mechanical on this car is brand new. It is back to zero miles. Now here's the other side of the transfer case. You can see the uh, hard linkage up above. You know, I'm real excited for this. I'll show you a little more when I look inside the car. The factory cross member would bolt in and would support this, but the drive shaft, the front drive shaft would be in the way, which is why we've got that custom piece in there. To be honest, I really do love the patina on this. The rattiness without all the rust <laughs> really looks good. I like it. Uh, I do like having full fenders. I don't like when they're cut. I know you can do that to get bigger tires, but I'm not necessarily a fan. These are 34 and a half and they just clear. So I am super happy about that. Looking inside, yeah, it's of course pretty rough. I've got the uh, carpet pulled up. I've got to do a lot for the interior, but check this out. This doubler setup is actually coming, or this particular configuration has a triple stick shifter. So what this does is it allows me to select, of course, high and low, but I can also put it in two wheel drive with the rear wheels driving, or if I ever wanted, I could put it in two wheel drive with the front wheels driving. So this shifter right here, this is the two or three range box. All the way back towards me is high, neutral, low. You can't put this in low without these being low, otherwise you could break the uh, intermediate shaft. These two shifters here, these are the 205 gearbox. The one right in the middle, this is the rear wheel drive or the rear output selector. And again, it's high, neutral, low. This is the front output of the two or the 205, same deal all the way back is high, neutral, and low. So as you see it right here, high in the 203, which is what you want. The uh, output, the rear output for the 205 is in high, which means power is being sent to the rear wheels. And the 203 is in neutral right now. The 203, or excuse me, not 203. The front output on the 205 is in neutral. So this essentially is rear wheel drive. This will be my normal driving configuration. Maybe I'll get an extra MPG or two, That'd be fantastic. I'm really hoping to get at least 10, 10 to 12 here, which would be amazing, especially because I want to daily drive this. Uh, but yeah, it's now of course this is not done. You see there's definitely some more work to do. This is the plate that comes with the, the shifters and this stock trans hump is not, not gonna work as is. So on the lower end, it's nice and level, but then of course this part digs deep, you can see a Maybe you can, I'm not sure. There's a glue that's kind of blocking it. But this steps down probably about an inch and a half. And so while the mounting points for the plate are all good, except for this corner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this out. I'm gonna fabricate a piece to go underneath here and then turn down and I'll weld this all in so that it's a nice flat level surface where I can mount this plate, finish the shifters and go from there. Now this was a small block truck, so I want to make sure I throw a huge shout out to Mr. Tall John from Tall John's Fun Shop. He actually brought me that 727. Uh, he's over on the East Coast when he came down for an event. I picked that up from him. So thanks, dude. I really appreciate it. I think this setup is pretty sweet. Now the cool thing about these Dodge trucks in the 70s is this hump is just bolted in. Right now it's actually just sitting in place because I've already removed the screws. So I'll pull the boots, pull the plate, pull this hump take it in the garage for some fabrication. Now I have lots of little things I've got to do for the truck before I can start daily driving it. You know, I've got to rewire the whole thing. Obviously I'm going to do some stuff with the interior. I'll probably put a nice interior in, new carpet. I like the seats. I'll just refurbish them a little bit. New dash setup, the works. I don't know if I'm going to get it painted or not. I really like the way it looks now, but I will address the rust on top of the uh, removable top. I'm pretty excited. All right, I feel like I'm talking your ear off for a while now. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that trans tunnel and let's bend some metal.
So I ran out of welding gas, <laughs> of course, right in the middle of the project. Uh, I had these three bad welds here. These guys here, you see like no protection, no gas protection at all. A lot of porosity going inside the weld. So that's obviously no bueno. After those three, I figured, okay, I got to stop, check it out. Yep, sure as hell, I'm out of gas. But I got the piece fabbed up, the whole front part welded in nicely. It's pretty structurally sound, at least. It's not going to move. So what I'll do is I'll finish cutting out my slot for the shifters, and then I'll just kind of, I guess, prep it, throw it back in the car. I can finish welding it in the car. You know what? I won't bolt it down. I'll just set it in place so I can make sure everything fits, and I'll call that. But I've got to go back to uh, the Welder's Depot locally here on Monday, get some new gas so I can finish this up. Now I'm just using an angle grinder and a Dremel tool for the final radiuses and whatnot. Uh, pretty simple and easy, basic. You know, apart from just cutting out the hole for the shifter, I also wanted to clean this up a bit, so I used a torch, a scraper, got some of that bed liner off. I'm not going to paint it color, I'm just going to kind of re-bed line the whole inside of the truck. And since I had an extra two hours now that I'm kind of stopped on the welding project, I figured I may as well take the time to uh, completely strip the interior. Everything. May as well, right? Now I pulled out enough carpet to completely fill my trash bin. I don't know who put this in last, but they completely coated the entire inside in that adhesive and slapped carpet everywhere. You know, you can see that driver's pan's gonna have to be replaced. But really, I just gotta strip all this glue off before I can lay primer and then finally put some bed liner down. Not fun. And I guess that's where I'll finish this video. Kind of handcuffed on this piece right here. Uh, but I mean, as you can see on that Ram Charger, 426, the 727 with the custom dual, uh, or I shouldn't say dual, it's a doubler set up, 203 and a 205. I'm really excited for this pickup. I'm gonna be able to tow all the projects to all the events with this truck. I wanna daily drive it. I'm really looking forward to it. Man, I'm really bummed I can't finish this right now. <laughs> but anyways, keep staying tuned. Uh, I plan to work and at least post a, a video on this Ram Charger once every month or two. Uh, obviously, I've got a few other projects I'm bouncing around, but I'm really pushing to get this done because I want to start driving this. The vehicle I'm daily driving right now isn't going to be here for too much longer, and this is going to have to take the spot. So it's got to get done. Uh, if you got any comments or questions, especially as I was showing the truck, feel free to drop that you know down below. Uh, love to hear what you got to say about it. Maybe I missed something. Maybe you got a question about how I did something. Would love to answer it. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time.